Coach, can you talk about where Brookshire has come since the first day you met him and since the first game he was forced on the field to where he is this afternoon? Uh, I'll tell you, um, it, it's, it's emotional because of where he has come from and the things that he's been through to get to this spot. Um, you know, you got to remember, we come through a time period where, you know, we have about a week, week and a half to make a decision and Jordan Brookshire is fourth. And, and you know, when he and I talked uh, yesterday at length, you know, one of the things I reminded him of was that was one of the toughest conversations that I've ever had to have with a player um, because of the situation we went through and, and everything that he had been through. And now where he's come from to get to this point is, is remarkable. And you talk about toughness, you talk about energy, you talk about belief, you talk about positivity. He encapsulates all of that. And, you know, all the hard work that he's done to put in. And, you know, I know Coach had mentioned it. And, you know, it's really a credit to Jordan that he's in this position because everybody played well. He just played that much better and really took it to heart on how to learn football, how to learn how to play quarterback. And, and, and it really started the show here in the practices over the last two weeks. And, and I mean, I'm extremely proud to coach him, and I'm extremely proud that he's an Aztec. I think he embodies all of what Aztec football is all about. Is his passing game better now than his running game, what we saw in those glimpses when he played pretty well coming off the bench? I, yeah, I, the one thing, I mean, is accuracy. And, we, and we've, put a lot of, uh, we've put a lot of effort into it. And, and to be honest with you, I've changed over the course of the last year, year and a half. And, and, and really the evaluation process of everything that we went through, the first person that had to change was me in, in, in how I teach and, and, and how the things we work on in, in our individual drills to be able to create accuracy. And, and it's not about how hard you throw, it's about how accurate you're throwing, really putting the emphasis on timing and, and, and precision. And I think Jordan really took to that. I think he really saw it in his head and saw those pictures and could really visualize himself doing that. And you really start started to see really after practice number three, you know, practice four on, you really started to see all that come together for him. And you really started to see big plays being made throughout the course. And when you looked at it, the guy who was making all those big plays was Jordan. And, and so, you know, um, yes, to answer your question, he is, he is his accuracy you know, obviously that's the one thing that, that was that was tough a year ago for him, and that's the one thing that he's really made great strides in. And, you know, I mean, that kid's been through a lot. You know, I don't know if I can say this, Mike, but you know, he had COVID last year, and he came back to Tuesday's practice before we went to Colorado. That was his first practice in four weeks. And so – you look at the things that he done. He, and, and I asked him, I said, Jordan, do, are, are you ready to play? He looked me right in the eye and he said, coach, I'm playing. I'm not ready to play. I'm playing. And, and this third series of the game he's in. And, and so he was learning by fire as he was going through the last, you know, really two and a half games. He was learning on the field there in those game situations. You know, we go Colorado State, he carried the ball 27 times. And he had only had three practices going into that game. And, 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 you know, we got voided at tailback with some injuries and stuff. And he said, Coach, put the ball in my hands. I'm going to win this game. Defense isn't going back out. Put the ball in my hands. I'm going to win this game. And that's why, you know, I mean, that's Jordan. And, and that's his work ethic that leads us to this point right now. Uh, and a follow-up question on Lucas Johnson. Is it conceivable you can develop an RPO package where he comes into the game and spurts uh, to change the whole dynamics of what you're doing offensively and to complement what Jordan is doing? Or is that doing too much on the kids' shoulders and the offensive shoulders? With Lee, I, I, I laugh because anything is conceivable with me. I got a mind that goes a 1,000 miles per hour in a 1,000 different directions. So, uh, yes, everything is conceivable. There's nothing let, – let's, let's leave it at this. There's nothing that, that is ever not on the table for us to win a football game. And we will use our personnel – to be able to put those guys in positions to be able to make plays. And if, and if the best situation for us to win is to bring another quarterback in at certain times to do certain things, we're going to do it. Because the bottom line is winning for the Aztecs. And a final question for me. How hard 
has it been to knock all the rust off Jalen Maiden, and where is he in terms of being an accomplished quarterback, considering he wasn't an SEC program? I, it, it hasn't been hard. I think I think to Jalen's credit, you know, I thought he had a great summer. Uh, you know, we, we challenged him over the summer to be able to commit to physical and mental conditioning with Coach Hall and the strength and conditioning staff, and I thought he did a great job with that. Uh, you know, he's right in the middle of this. I thought he played well. I thought he had some days, you know, where you could see him struggle a little bit for the most part. He's been really consistent, and I've been really pleased with where he's at. And, and you know what? I don't think anybody would have any concerns if he went into a game and had to win a game for us. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Yes, sir, Lee. Thank you. We'll go to Kirk. Hey, Jeff, for Brookshire to go from fourth to first, last year were there things that you guys just didn't see in him, or were there things that he had to really work on to move up? Kirk, you know, I don't, I don't think it's anything. I think that might have been more of a product of everything that we had been through to that time. And, and you know, we were disbanded. We were home. We were back. We were disbanded. We were home. You know, and, and it's just a, a, every kid had a different process. Every player had a different process that they were coming through to that. And then we had such a short time to get ready, and you're making that decision based on about seven days' worth of work. And, and, you know, sometimes it just takes some players a little bit longer to get their feet on the ground and get comfortable. So I don't, I don't think it was anything more than just what we've been through. I think it's a credit to Jordan's perseverance. And, you know, I know I've brought this up before, you know, when we made, when we made those decisions and I had that talk with Jordan, you know, Jordan came back in and he said, Coach, I want your honest opinion. What do I do? I want to play. And I said, Jordan, I said, if you trust me, then just hang it out with us. Let's go through the season. It's a long season. Let's continue to work. Let's continue to develop. I'm not going to stop coaching you. You keep going. I'll keep going. And let's see where this leads. And, and this is where we are today. And, and in a time frame where that's, that's really more of an uncommon trait in an individual, I, I think it's a credit to the toughness that Jordan has. And, and, you know, you can see it in the respect that the team has for him. Between the end of spring camp and the start of fall, you know, they're not with you guys as much. What did he do during that time that really helped him to get to this day? Uh, I, he became a leader. And, and really, he was, he, he along with the other quarterbacks, but he was really probably the strongest voice in terms of getting the wideouts out, you know, uh, organizing. You know, we, we run seven on seven throughout the course of our, our, our summer conditioning with Coach Hall. And, and, you know, from all the reports that I got back is, you know, he's the one that's really – pushing everybody through the process, pushing them through, getting plays. You know, we're trying to get 30 plays in 15 minutes, and, and, and that's aggressive there. And he's really one that's pushing the tempo. And then on the off days, he's the one that's, you know, everybody's getting together to throw. If, they, if somebody called Jordan, Jordan's going to go throw. And, and not that the other ones wouldn't, but I just, I just feel like he really embraced becoming a true quarterback and, and really doing the things that it takes to be successful. And then as the season unfolds game game by game, how do you determine when to get the other guys some work? And, and especially like a young guy like Haskell, he could play four games and still redshirt. It, are there scenarios where he would come in? How does it work for the other guys? Well, I think uh, I, I, I think you got two questions going there. You know, I think let's, let's exclude Will for right now and let's just talk about uh, Jordan, Lucas, and Jalen. You know, I, I think that's, that's flow. And, and obviously how the game is going and how it's unfolding. Jordan's our starting quarterback. And, and, you know, Coach and I have been together for a long time, and we've never been one that's ever flip-flopped back and forth. And so Jordan has the comfort of knowing that, hey, he's going to get every opportunity to, to continue to push through this and, and, and learn and grow and, and lead us to victories. And, and then the, the other two really, you know, we're still deciding between the other two, and they're still in competition for that second spot. So we'll see how all that plays itself out. And, you know, injury and, and, and stuff like that, you know, that, that all dictates a lot of what's happening. With Will, you know, I think he's just really in a position right now where we're just allowing him to get his feet, continue to get his feet on the ground and continue to grow in college football. You know, you got to remember he's a true freshman. You know, I, I, in your article you mentioned last spring he was still in high school. And, and so, you know, he's, he's a college kid. He's going to class for the first time. You know, there's a lot on his plate. We want to make sure that he's on stable footing as we continue to grow him and he continues to develop. Obviously, you know, for you guys that are out there, he's a tremendous talent. He's exactly what we hoped he would be and, and, and even more. And, and he's a great person and a great individual. And we look forward to the future that he has. And we'll see how this all plays itself out moving forward. Then for the offense in general, 
obviously the running game has been very traditionally strong. It looks to be strong again. And do you still really believe you're going to be able to be 50, 50, or, or is it going to be led by the run? And, you know, how do you kind of get the passing game really kind of cranked up? Well, I think the goal is always to be 50, 50 in our last scrimmage on Sunday. I think we had 35 passes and 34 runs. And, and so, you know, now, you know, obviously the flow of the game is going to dictate that, you know, there's some games where, you know, you, you get a big lead or you jump up on somebody and you're going to control the tempo, control the clock, keep the defense off the field. There's other games where you might get into a shootout and then obviously that's going to change the flow of everything. So, you know, the, the goal is to be 50, 50, but the goal is also to get the playmakers, the ball. And however we need to do that, that's what we're going to do, whether it be by the run, by the pass, you know, fly sweeps, all that stuff, you know, all that stuff is designed to get guys into space. And I think, you know, we've really developed a good plan. I think we got the players in, in, in positions now where we can do that. And I think our quarterbacks are trained now to be able to distribute the ball the way it needs to be distributed. Most teams, they get a lead, I think, and they keep handing it off, handing it off, run the clock and, and all that stuff. But would you guys consider trying to maybe control the clock with the pass late in games? Absolutely. Even, just to develop that? Absolutely. But I think that's a trust factor. I think that's a development of your quarterback and a trust factor in, 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 in the entire offense to be able to execute in that moment. You know, and, and, and you know, when, when you're in the middle of a game, you know, as, as a play caller, whether you're an offensive, defensive play caller or you're the head coach, your only thought is what are we going to do in order to win this game? Okay. And, and, and when, when you make those decisions, you're, you're ultimately making those decisions based on who you trust and, and, and what you trust in order to get the job done. And, and a year ago, you know, we knew that between Greg, the offensive line, and the tight ends, we knew we were going to be able to run the ball as we were developing a quarterback. So let's not put the quarterback in that situation where it goes awry and now all of a sudden we create a situation that we didn't need to create. I think the comfort with everything over the course of the last year, we're different. Starting with me to everybody in this offense, we are a completely different offense and completely different people with a tremendous amount of trust and comfort with each other. So I think as we continue to move forward through this, you know, I mean, shoot, we're on the two yard line on Sunday and we get in empty and we hit the tight end on a nice little 30 yard, you know, uh, quick game catch. You know, those are the things that I think, you know, a year ago, I don't know if I could have said I would have been comfortable doing that. But now, without question, hey, let's get in the empty, let's spread them out, let's make them defend us now. And, and, and you know, that's the comfort that I have and the players and the players have in me and our staff as, as we continue to work together through this and grow together. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Kirk, for being here. Thanks, Kirk. We'll go to John. Coach, good to see you. Um, I'm curious, like, how unique of a path, or maybe other guys go through this, but from Santa Rosa to Laney to Redshirt, pandemic, fourth string guy to start. Right. I mean, his path is is pretty incredible. Would you Would you agree with that? Yes. First off, how's the family doing, John? Everybody doing well? It's doing well. I good. appreciate I appreciate you asking. Everybody's good. doing well. I hope Great. your family's good. Everybody's well. Thank you very much. Good. Um, I, I would say this. I would say there's there's probably over the course of the last year, uh, there's things everybody's been through that we can honestly say we've never been through before. And, you know, I, I think, um, you know, I just – there's there's not enough – I guess, credit that you can say to give to Jordan to say, hey, you did something that was completely out of the norm, which was when you didn't, when it didn't go your way, you didn't panic, you, you, you didn't bail, you, you fought. And, and that's exactly the way he played when he got in the game. It's not always pretty. It's not always the way we want it to go, but he fights. And, and, you know, you come out of spring and, and, and you know, coach, and when we left spring and, and you know, we, we, the quarterback situation is obviously the most important situation going on amongst other things, but it's always the most public situation. You know, coach says Lucas has a slight edge. Jordan never panicked. I never heard from Jordan. Never did Jordan come in and say, coach, what's this? I never did Jordan question. Jordan just went to work. And that's who he is. And, and that's why he's where he is today. It has nothing to do with any other person in this team other than just Jordan's commitment just to working and being tough. And I have the utmost respect for him.
because of that. And and all the other guys, I don't want to, you know, shortchange the other guys, but that's just the amount of respect. And I think you, you see that in our team. Yeah, I'm curious, the relationship, like I'm sure that position groups get very tight and there's a close bond between the group. Um, you know, what is the relationship like between Jordan and Lucas and Jalen and some of even your younger players in that room as well? They're best friends. Um, you know, I can tell you, you know, I mean, every now and then they'll FaceTime me and they're all together. Every now and then they'll shoot me a picture of them doing something and they're all together. Um, this this has not changed. It, it's it's my belief and it's the very first meeting that we have. You're in competition, but the team and the offense is only as strong as how together our quarterback room is. Because obviously everybody has a tight knit group of friends on this team, but when they see all, all three or four of those guys in competition and they see them when decisions are made and then all of a sudden they're supporting one another, I, you guys have heard me say this before. Somebody will make a throw. It could be Jalen, it could be Jordan. And the first guy saying, great throw, 18, are the quarterbacks that are standing around. And I'm looking around, turning around like, who, who's just doing it? And it's those guys. You know, they're, they're, they're in it because they're Aztec football players. And, and the bottom line is, is that the Aztec Warriors win on Saturday. And they all know, because we all went through it, they're all going to have an opportunity at some point in time and when they get out there, they want those guys to treat them the same way that, that they're treating them. So, you know, I, it, it's a very close-knit group, and, and I'm proud to be a part, just a part of that group because we're all in this together, working together. Coach, I always appreciate it. Best of luck in preparing for next weekend. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. We'll go back to Perk. Hey, Jeff, you mentioned uh, hitting a – tight end with a pass from the two-yard line. Can you talk about how much more the tight end might be involved this year? And it, it, How much of that is because you think you have something special in Daniel Bellinger, or how much would you have wanted to emphasize it more anyway? Yes, to all of it. It's pretty simple. We have a special tight end. And, and you know, scrimmages get hard, you know, because you got guys coming in from all over the place. You're calling for two, three different groups. You're going right back to back to back. You know, the one thing that, that, that I really did a lot of studying on, and I got to thank, you know, Norv Turner and a couple of the other guys that I know you guys have seen around at practice, you know, we've been able to sit down and talk about just how, to, how do you, you know, how do you, how do you take a group of players that you have a wider range of talents and now bringing them all together and then making sure they're getting their touches and knowing, knowing where they're going to get their touches at. And, you know, in a scrimmage, we're setting out to do that. It doesn't always happen that way, especially in the RPO world. When when you got a lot of that, you know, that ball gets handed off sometimes, and it's going for twenty down the field, and and you know, you're, you're counting on that to be a touch for somebody within the system too, or it could be a touch. But when you look at the overall part of the scrimmage, I think our tight ends had like nine targets on Saturday, and they had six or seven catches. You know, throughout the course of a game, that's predominantly going to be Dan. And so, you know, that's where that's where the development of this whole 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 philosophy comes from as 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 we continue to grow in it is to be able to get the ball into our playmakers' hands. And obviously Dan's gonna be a huge part of this. He's special. I mean, there's no doubt about it, he's special. Between being an on the line tight end and being a mismatch, being able to move them all over the field, he, he's gonna be heavily involved in everything that we do. Did Daniel do anything between last year and this year that kind of enables him to maybe take another jump this year? I thought, you know, to be honest with you, I thought his last five games were absolutely spectacular. One, I thought, one, I thought, you know, when we when we got a little bit more settled with with Lucas and Jordan, we were able to bring him more into the fold. And then two, you know, you look at his production between Colorado State and Colorado and and, and BYU. I think, you know, and. and you know, you really see the development of what he's doing. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster, he's healthy, he's tough. You know, I, I think all those things have just continued to grow over the course of the summer. So I'm excited to see how, how he continues to progress throughout the course of the season. And, you know, obviously, you know, this first game is going to be going to be exciting to get everybody involved and get everybody going and to be able to get our playmakers in space and let them work. Then with the running backs and the receivers, can you – Maybe mention a couple names that we haven't heard as much about in the past that could maybe have some breakthroughs this year. Uh, you know, I you know, you mentioned Eli Kothi, and, and you know, obviously between he and Jesse and, and Kobe Smith, I think I, I think you have three really legitimate uh, developing uh, top players 
Um, you know, uh, some younger guys, you know, Makai Shaw has really had a great camp. Uh, Breon Penny, um, I'll tell you, Breon Penny is, is explosive. And, and, you know, he really shows signs. You know, he's a young kid. Both he and Makai are young kids that are growing. Uh, you know, I, we've really seen Terrell Shavers start to show here, you know, especially over the last five to seven days, which has been good. You know, I think, I think Terrell's, you know, back in shape and, and, and you know, really uh, ingrained in the offense now, which is great. Uh, from the backfield, you know, Jalen Armstead, you know, I know Coach mentioned it. You know, I thought Jalen had a great scrimmage on Saturday. I thought that's Jalen that, that, that we need and, and that we've seen in the past. And I thought he had a great scrimmage. Um, you know, I've been impressed with Lucky Avenger. Um, you know, he's a kid that just kind of hits it downhill, nothing flashy, but he, he's able, you know, he's able to go in and play hard and play tough. He knows what he's doing. He's always in the right spot. And then, and then I think from a young standpoint, the true freshman, you know, I think Cam and, and Josh Nicholson at, at wide out, you know, both have, both have opportunities to be special players here. You know, now I don't, you know, they're not ready yet, but I, you see, you see a skill set, you know, between speed, be able to put your foot in the ground and make plays and make big plays. I, I think both those have both those young men have have a great future here. Between the running backs, the receivers, the tight ends, and even the quarterback, there's so many different options. What's the biggest challenge for you in trying to find that balance and get the touches for the guys who should be it? Managing it all and keeping them all happy. I mean, if you want the truth, <laughs> do it all. Uh, but that's, I mean, that's, that's the challenge that, that's the challenge that our staff wants. And, and, and that's the one where we come in every, every day. And that's, that's the, that's the challenge. And, and that's the challenge that you want to create. Not only are we creating competition, but we're creating, we're creating an atmosphere where guys look at it and say, okay, I'm going to get the ball here. I'm going to get the ball here. I'm going to get the ball here. And this is where I have the opportunity to do something with. And, and now it's now it's up to us, and it's up to me to call it and get them in that position. And and you know what, it's it's been a lot of it's been a lot of work and studying and and really trying to grow myself into being able to get them into that position and then call it in that position. So I've adjusted a lot of different things. What I'm going to do in the box, um, things to make sure in between series targets who we're targeting, how we're targeting them making sure that, that the coaches on the field know, hey, this is where the ball is going. Hey, this is, this is what we're trying to do in this series and making sure we're playing as far ahead as we can in order to keep the defenses, you know, hopefully on their heels as much as we can. So, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, hey, like you said, there's, there's, there's a lot of talent and, and now we got to manage it. We got to get the ball in their hands. And now when the ball is in their hands, they got to go be themselves and make big plays. And the last thing, uh, last season, you guys weren't as productive in the second half, putting points on the board as you'd like to be. Did you identify anything in the offseason of why that was, and what do you do to correct that this year? Well, I think I think the simple and obvious answer is I called the wrong plays at the wrong time. I mean, to be honest with you, but also um, I think I think a lot of what I just talked about and a lot of what we've put our focus on will help with that, uh, because you know it's it's not necessarily. You know, I, I think before I was more play driven and not player driven and, and, and you know, looking back and in retrospect and, and, and really kind of self critiquing myself, we're, we're, we need to be player driven because it's about the players. And, and, and I think if, if, if we stay focused on being player driven and being able to incorporate everybody into what we're doing, I think it's going to help, you know, obviously you know, allow defenses or, or not allow defenses to really hone in on what we're doing. And, 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 you know, a lot of that, Kirk, to be honest with you, is, is comfort and trust in the quarterback, you know, and, 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 you know, we're getting to a point now and, and, you know, I told Mike and I told coach, any one of our four quarterbacks in our room right now, I feel comfortable going into game and calling the exact same game and, and, and producing and, and really working the exact same way, regardless of who's in the game. And, and, and that's 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 a unique feeling to go into with four of them that way because they all four can play the exact same way.